How to knit a hat for beginners. Winter is coming and it's time to start making winter warm again. So today's video will be all about how to knit a hat with circular needles. I'll show you how to start it, how to figure out how many stitches you need to cast on and of course how to decrease here towards the top. I try to come up with a pattern that is super easy to knit but will still result in a contemporary hat that looks a bit more fashionable. It's a simple one by one rib stitch that will ensure a nice fit and also a very structured three dimensional look. I will be finishing this hat or beanie as some call it uh, using circular needles and the very simple magic loop technique. But if you prefer knitting with double pointed needles that will work as well. Either way let's dive right into it and show you how to knit a hat. Just two more notes. Please like this video right now to support my work and remember if you have any questions, feedback or you need help feel free to comment and I'm sure we will find a solution together. For this hat you will need the pattern of course it's the first link in the description below. Yarn. I'm using 100 grams of this nice DK weight yarn for a men's size M that's around 280 to 300 yards. Then you will need knitting needles matching the weight of your yarn. I am using 3.5 millimeter needles here. That's US size 4. The recommended size for this yarn is actually 4 to 5 millimeters. So I picked a relatively small needle so I can get a nice and neat rib. You might want to follow suit. And then you will need some scissors, a sharp tapestry needle, a tape and maybe some stitch markers. And once you have all these materials we are ready to go. First you need to figure out how many stitches you need to cast on for your hat. There are two ways to do this. First the pattern will give you some size uh, suggestions and a gauge. So you can use a similar yarn and the same needle size and try to meet my gauge or you do your own calculations. Either way you will have to knit a simple swatch. So simply cast on a couple of stitches and knit a swatch that is roughly 10 centimeters wide and 5 centimeters high in a one by one rib stitch. So knit one, purl one. I cast on 26 stitches here. And in an ideal world you would have to wash and block this little swatch and that's why it is on this uh, blocking mat here. Keep the working yarn attached to the ball as you can reuse the yarn later on. And then it's time to count stitches. You need to figure out how many stitches you need to cover 5 centimeters or 2 inches whatever you prefer. Ribbing is a very stretchy fabric with a lot of negative ease. So it's very important that you stretch your fabric before you measure. Stretch it out so the ribs here uh, appear nice and neat and then count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. I need 13 stitches. And once you have this number you simply have to measure your head or the head of the intended wearer. Now there is no right or wrong way to measure here. Simply measure where you want the bottom of the brim to be. Maybe you want to pull your head down below the ears or maybe you want uh, it to sit above the ears. Uh, you need to take the measurement of your ideal fit. I recommend doing this uh, in front of a mirror. And the rest is simple math. Divide the stitches that you counted by the width that you um, measured. So 5 centimeters or 2 inches. In my case that's 13 divided by 5 and the result will be how many stitches you need for 1 centimeter or 1 inch. And then simply multiply uh, that number 2.6 in my case times the circumference of uh, your head 57 in my case and that's uh, 148 in my case. 
and then you only need to round da down that number uh, to the next number dividable, dividable by 6. In my case, that is 144. And then you're already set and we can start casting on. So I have my yarn, my needles, and now it's time to cast on uh, stitches. In my case, 144. So we can start knitting the head. I'll cast on with a tubular cast on. It's a bit fiddly, but it will create a super nice finish. If you think that's too difficult, you can also use a long tail cast on around two needles or a uh, German twisted cast on. You will find links to my tutorials and further uh, suggestions in the pattern. And there is no shame at all in admitting you are still a beginner. So using a normal long tail cast on can still look very nice. Anyway, a tubular cast on is nothing else but a very condensed short little piece of double knitting. So you start with a setup row where you twist the yarn around the needles. And so first you do a simple slip knot. And then from here you have to weave your needle around the yarn to create knit and purl stitches. So we'll start with a purl stitch because there's already one stitch here. So you come in from above and grab the yarn. And if you look very closely, this will create a little purl bump here. And then we need a knit stitch. So we come in from below, grab the yarn. There's our knit stitch. Then another purl stitch knit stitch, purl stitch, knit stitch. So this is super, super simple. Just make sure that you, well, I always count out loud because it's so easy to lose track. And once I um, cast on uh, 20 stitches in that manner, I will always place a stitch marker and then I weave or cast on the another 20 stitches and so on. And again, uh, we need or I need 140 stitches total. And you don't have to uh, cast on any extra stitches, just 144 stitches and I'll see you there. So I cast on my 144 uh, stitches here and now we need to knit two preparation rows. For now we will continue flat so we need to um, turn the work around and that's why I twist um, the yarns around one more time so I don't accidentally untwist this very first stitch as I turn uh, my work around. And the repeat for this very first row will be knit one through the back loop and then a pearl, a slip one pearlwise with yarn in front. So essentially it's a row of double stocking knit stitch. And you can see how this first loop here sits on, is mounted uh, the wrong way. And that's why we knit it through the back loop. So knit one through the back loop and be careful with this very first stitch. It's a bit more difficult. And then slip one pearlwise with yarn in front. Knit one through the back loop. Slip one pearlwise with yarn in front. Knit one through the back loop across the whole row. So it's a very simple repeat, but go slowly because it can be uh, sometimes the stitches twist around the needles and you need to untwist them and so on. So go slowly. So I finished this very first setup row and now it's time for the second setup row and we will already join uh, our knitting in the round here. And by the way, uh, make sure to comment if you want me to uh, create a full tutorial on the tubal cast on and how to use it for different knitting stitch patterns. So what I will do is I will slide my stitches here to the center of my needles and then um, pull out my cable and uh, just in case my uh, last video was all about the magic loop, loop technique. So if you need to catch up, I'll link you the tutorial up in here um, because I'm not going to repeat everything in this tutorial. And then I'll slide my stitches here to the front and I make extra sure that I don't accidentally twist the stitch. So I slipped all my stitches to the tip of the needle and I made extra sure that the uh, 
that the cast on edge here forms one continuous line here on the inside that isn't twisted. Double check, uh, it's so easy to mess up. And now we can start knitting in the round and doing a traveling uh, match loop is recommended in this case uh, because it will be much easier uh, to knit across the gap. So the repeat for this very first row will be, I'm gonna place a stitch marker here. So the repeat for this second setup row is just as easy. You slip one purl wise with yarn in back and then you purl one. Try to keep the gap here as tight as possible and then slip another um, stitch purl wise with a yarn held in back, purl one. So you always slip the knit stitches and here those purl stitches you purl. They are a bit in the back. That's because, well, this is double knitting, I guess. And otherwise the repeat is super simple. And continue until the very end of this second row. And remember, we did a traveling magic loop, so you will have to cover these stitches as well. That's why we placed the stitch marker. So I finished knitting that second setup row and from here you have two choices. First, um, you knit another two rows of double stockinette stitch, which means you would have to knit one, uh, slip one purlwise with yarn in front one row and then another row with a uh, slip one purlwise with yarn in back and then purl one. This will create a very rounded um, cast on edge. So that would probably be my preferred choice if I wouldn't want a folded brim. For a folded brim, I only, two, I only do um, two setup rows and I continue knitting in a simple one by one rib stitch from here. So knit one and purl one, knit one and purl one. And you can see um, which stitches you need to purl. So here there is a little purl bump. So I purl it. This is a knit stitch and I knit it. So you don't really have to count uh, stitches. Just uh, knit every stitch the way it appears. Now, my last video was all about um, getting ribbing to look as neat as possible. And one of the tri tricks was giving the working yarn a good tuck after every purl or after every first purl stitch. So you knit, so I always knit one, purl one, tuck. Knit one, purl one, tuck at the working yarn. Knit one, purl one, tuck. At first, this will feel a bit awkward, but once you uh, knit a couple of rows, this will feel like a second nature. And from here, you need to uh, knit around 10 centimeters in this one by one rib stitch, 10 centimeters or uh, four inches of this ribbing. Uh, so it's always in every row, it's the exact same repeat, uh, knit one, per one, and so on. And one more thing, remember to take uh, breaks. All this uh, pulling on the working yarn after every purl stitch will put quite a bit more stress on your fingers than usual. So I only knit for about 15 to 20 minutes and then I take a short break. Maybe shake out my hands a bit, stretch a bit, get a new cup of tea or coffee if that's your thing. And then I continue. And personally, I often actually set myself a timer on my mobile phone so I don't forget it and I don't get into the knitting zone where I go like, yeah, just one more round, one more round. And um, yeah, again, uh, you need to continue in this one by one rib uh, stitch for uh, 10 centimeters or around uh, four inches. Oh, and I noticed I wanted to mention two more things. First of all, 
here in the second round you will already uh, see what a well-rounded edge the tubular uh, cast on will create. What you will also be able to see is if you accidentally twisted your cast on edge. This can happen, no problem. The problem is when you just continue knitting blindly and then after you covered five or uh, so centimeters, you suddenly notice your work looks like this. So here in the second row, you should already be able to see that your cast on edge forms one continuous line that is not twisted. And uh, so don't wait too long. So, a couple of hours later, this is how my little hat in the making looks like now. Quite pretty, but far from being finished. I only knit about 10 centimeters here. Still, now is a good time to control the fit of your head. And we obviously need to talk about when you can start decreasing. First, this hat pattern has a folded brim. So if you want to control the fit, you obviously need enough fabric to fold it. And you won't be able to do this when you only have a centimeter or so. Also, the tubular cast on here is quite stretchy. And if you try uh, your hat on only after 10 rows or so, your fabric will behave quite a bit different than your whole head will when it's finished. This hat should fit around your head, so the rib looks nice. Uh, it shouldn't be overstretched like this, except you prefer it that way. But of course, uh, the ribs shouldn't be uh, as condensed as they appear here. So your head uh, drops past your eyes uh, on its own. Um, if it doesn't fit nice and you feel, well, this is a bit too loose or too tight, then I have bad news for you. You would have to adjust your cast on and start all over again. The good news is once you've figured things out, you can knit as many hats with a perfect fit as long as you use the same yarn. And it really boils down to, you know, maybe pinching the fabric a bit while you uh, tried it on and then, um, you know, see how much less you would need. Uh, three ribs, maybe six ribs, and remember uh, the number has to be divided by six. And each rib here means two stitches. So just pull out the fabric and see how much less you would need. And if it's too tight, well, what you can do is uh, you can um, try it on and pull it down as far as you get. And then take your tape and uh, check the difference and adjust your cast on accordingly. But remember, a one by one rib is very, very forgiving. Um, so if you are a bit, little bit off, it won't matter a lot. And you will also be able to add a little rubber band here on the inside later on to correct minor mistakes or create an extra snug fit. Now there's one important question you might be asking. When should you start decreasing your head? The answer is actually quite easy, but it will totally depend on your personal preferences. First of all, this pattern here is meant to be worn with a folded brim. But if you don't like that, that's okay. But obviously you would need less fabric in this case. So first you need to decide for yourself how high your brim should be. In my case, I want it to be uh, seven centimeters high. But again, it entirely depends on your personal preferences. But I wouldn't go too small. Anything below four centimeters doesn't work very well. And now I already did this. Now you simply have to fold uh, your project or your uh, work in progress the way you want your brim to look and then put it on. And I tried to sketch this uh, and then the, uh, the project or you should start decreasing when your project reaches the crown of your head. And there is, you know, barely a uh, wisp of hair uh, peeking out uh, or skin. Now that's just for this pattern um, because uh, we, I want um, the tip to be rather tall. For other patterns, you would have to do it differently. But once this is the case, you can start decreasing 
and the pattern will give you a couple of other options. In my case, this means uh, my fabric here, the total length of the fabric needs to be 23 centimeters or nine inches. So before we can start decreasing, you need to place a couple of stitch markers. I am using these uh, bulb shaped uh, stitch markers, uh, which you can attach freely uh, without having to knit. And uh, the pattern will tell you exactly where you need to place the stitch markers, but you can also do some very simple math. Remember, we cast on multiples of six. So in my case, those are all my stitches on the needle. I cast on 144 stitches. And now you need to divide or these 144 stitches or however many stitches you cast on into three equal parts. To three equal parts. This would be in my case 48 stitches. And now you need to carve out seven stitches here in the front and you need to take uh, subtract four stitches from this section and three from th this and now you already know where you need to place your stitch markers you need to place one here after 44 stitches 48 minus four then you knit seven stitches place a stitch marker and then 48 minus three is 45 and then you place another store, uh, stitch mark after 45 and here another after 48 stitches. So that's the simple math and it will work for any other number dividable by six. And once you place all your stitch markers, you can start knitting until you are four stitches before the first stitch marker. So I'm four stitches before this stitch marker where the next stitch marker is only seven stitches removed. And um, we are going to decrease like this. So from both direction and this, these seven stitches here in the middle will remain untouched um, for the whole time. So, and the decrease always works in two, um, well, two passes really. First, you will decrease um, this knit stitch here and this purl stitch. So you end up with two knit stitches next to each other. And then you knit across a row, round. And then in the next or in the third round, you will decrease these adjacent knit stitches into one. And then you rise and repeat. So how do you do that? So four stitches before the stitch marker, you knit an SSK. So one SSK here. And this will bring two knit stitches next to each other. And then you pull one stitch. I slip the stitch marker. And then when you come to the next stitch marker, let me get there quickly. Next stitch marker. You slip the stitch marker and here is a purl stitch. And this will remain untouched the whole time. And here we have three, two knit stitches and we want to bring these together. So in this case, it means we have to uh, purl one, knit one, and then knit two together. So knit these stitches together. That's the neatest right leaning decrease of them all. And then you continue knitting until you are four stitches before the next stitch marker. So I'm four stitches before the next single stitch marker. And here you have to do the exact same thing. The only difference is that there are no, no seven stitches in between the decreases. So four stitches before uh, the stitch marker. I'm going to knit an SSK here to bring these two knit columns together. Then I purl one stitch and this purl stitch will act as a separator between the decreases. Slip it. And now I will want to bring these two knit stitches together, which means I knit them together. And then you continue in pattern until you are four stitches before the last stitch marker. And here before the last stitch marker, you do exactly the same. You can see I placed a special stitch marker here so I can see where the beginning or the end of my row is. 
So it's always the same before the stitch marker you SSK and after the stitch marker you knit two together. So that's actually very, very easy to remember. And you always um, start the decrease with the uh, second um, knit column. Slip that. And here again, you knit one. This is the first knit column. And this is the second knit column. So you start the decrease here and knit two together. And this finishes the first row, the uh, round, sorry. And now you have to knit one uh, round across. So knit across one round. And then I'll show you how to knit the second um, decrease round, the second pass. So I finished knitting across that one round. I'm in my third round now and three stitches here before the double stitch marker. And here are two knit stitches next to each other. So there's nothing fancy happening here. You SSK them. You SSK them. And then you will end up with your uh, normal repeat. So one knit stitch purl knit purl. Then you slip the marker, knit across, knit across in the normal repeat. Remember these seven stitches remain untouched. Oopala, where is my stitch marker? It felt like running away. And then you purl one stitch here after the marker. And here again, there are two adjacent knit stitches. And what do you do? Well, you knit them together and then you continue until you are three stitches before the next stitch marker. And here in front of those single stitch markers, it's exactly the same three stitches before you SSK those adjacent knit stitches. Then you purl one, slip the marker. And then knit these um, knit stitches together. And from here, you can continue until you uh, come to the last stitch marker. So here for the last stitch marker, it's exactly the same. So you SSK again and one. By the way, uh, I mean, you don't necessarily have to SSK. You can uh, use any other uh, left leaning decrease as well. I have a full tutorial on left leaning decreases here on YouTube. I link it to you up in here in case you are not satisfied with your uh, SSK and they are a bit too loose. Anyway, from here, you need to knit across one more round and then you start all over again with the first round I showed you. So uh, four stitches before the stitch marker, you SSK and then you uh, knit two together a uh, purl and a knit stitch on the other side. Then you knit across one round. Then you do the exact same round I just showed you. You knit around. So it's a forced, easy four stitch repeat. And it's so easy to remember for the stitch marker, you SSK, you have a left leaning decrease. And after the stitch marker, you knit two together because you want a right leaning decrease. And continue repeating these four rounds and I'll see you there. So I made some good progress and there are only 48 stitches left on my knitting needles. That's about one third of the stitches I originally cast on. And I wanted to use at this point in my knitting to address a couple of well not issues, choices really, choices. So first of all, I transferred the stitches to double pointed knitting needles because I personally feel that knitting those last decreased rounds on double pointed knitting needles is a tiny bit easier and more comfortable than doing it with magic loop. But if you want to continue uh, using magic loop and you feel that's easier for you, of course, do that. And the second thing is if you continue uh, uh, decreasing the way I showed you, you will work towards a rather pointy tip. And if you want a 
the crown that is a bit more rounded you should decrease in every every round and not in every second round from here on either way i'm going to uh, continue decreasing here until there are only 18 stitches left and i leave it up to you if you want to do it in every row a round rather or every second round so i'm here in my last round and you might notice that there are only two stitches left here there, there, there are only two stitches left here before the stitch marker and not three or four. So just SSK these two stitches or whatever um, left leaning decrease you want to knit. So SSK these and knit two together after the stitch marker. So that's only the very last row, uh, round, sorry. Only the very last round where you uh, immediately um, knit the a bit fitly here that last round it, where you immediately decrease before and after the stitch marker and not with any stitches uh, between them and do that uh, in front of and after every uh, a stitch marker of that row so ssk that stitch here as well and so on so i finished knitting that very last round and now you only need to secure the stitches that are still on the needles so cut your working yarn leaving 10 or so inches and thread the tail on a tapestry needle and then pick up each and every one of your the stitches on your needle let me get that in focus and then pick up every single stitch that is on your needle you may uh, drop the stitch marker we don't need it anymore and slip every little stitch here to the tapestry needle and then pull the yarn uh, through so like this uh, without knots and then do the same with the remaining stitches here on the needle and I guess uh, if you have been knitting along this would be an excellent opportunity to congratulate you because you just finished knitting your possibly first hat. And now just pull tight, oh, pull tight, pull tight. And then you may want to, uh, okay, let me get this in focus. And then you may want to sew over one. So go through each little stitch one more time to secure it. Go through each little stitch one more. And then you can uh, pull the tail through to the other side. Oops. Like this. So we are here on the wrong side to do what a lot of knitters don't like doing weaving in ends but we only need to weave in four ends and i always use a sharp tapestry needle by the way if you want to learn how i weave in tails i'll link you my full tutorial up in here with 10 different methods but for ribbings i always do it like this so here's my tail i make sure that it's nice and tight and then i simply follow the course of one of those knits stitch ribs here columns and I as you can see I pierce right through uh, the stitches pull through and then I go one more time in the other direction and then I pull through but I don't pull it through through the tail all the way I massage it into place see how that finished and then once i am satisfied 
I can cut. Okay. And that's it. That's how it will look like now. Totally invisible or almost invisible and very secure. Then you probably will have a tail down here as well. And you can weave it in the exact same way. And here at the bottom, there is one more tail and you can use it to close the little gap here you created when you joined things in the round. And I just noticed things are really, really fuzzy here. So it's a bit difficult to say, but basically you just have to uh, graft one stitch here to bridge that gap, carefully bridge that gap. Um, there's actually not a lot. So I, it's very difficult uh, to show here, but I basically go underneath that stitch here and then you can already um, go maybe here underneath that uh, V of the knit stitch here. Underneath that V. And if you're satisfied, and I am, then you can continue weaving in this tail as well, the way I just showed you. Oh, and very important, uh, of course, you have to do this on the right side because this is a folded brim. So um, you need to do it on the right side. All the other tails uh, you need to weave in on the wrong side, but this tail you need to weave in on the uh, right side. If you do it like I just showed you, it will be almost invisible anyway, so it probably doesn't matter, but still I would, uh, if you want it all neat and tidy, then do it on the right side. So this is the way the hat looks like now, and I really urge you to put it on right away to see if it fits and if everything went right. But you will also notice that uh, your head will uh, stretch out the ribbings here at the brim, very nice and neat. But um, up in here, there's nothing to stretch it out. So uh, the ribbing will almost appear like stock in its stitch and it will be very pointy. To fix that, we need to block the head. To block your head, you need to soak it in lukewarm water for 30 minutes or maybe an hour. You can add some very mild soap or if you have um, a wool detergent and then uh, you need to wring it out between uh, two towels gently. Don't rub it or anything, then it will felt and you probably don't want that. And then you, then it should be almost dry. And then we can uh, pin it to a blocking mat or any other soft surface. So 30 minutes later, I removed my hat from its bath. I dried it between two towels and then I already uh, pinned it to my blocking mats. It's still a bit damp, but not wet. And uh, as you can see, I uh, pinned it in a symmetrical way. So here are the two decrease lines. And I placed the pins very close to each other and a bit further in because what will happen if you pin it right to the edge, often you end up with these kind of spikes. I don't know how, if you can see this with these kind of spikes and you want a nice clean edge here. Also here, uh, be very careful if you use the tubular cast on. The tubular cast on is very stretchy and uh, don't stretch it out to the max. Actually, don't stretch out the whole head out to the max chest. So the ribs are nice and neat and uh, that's all you want and a really nice dome shape here at the top. And then, you know, just let it dry overnight. Absolutely avoid overstretching, pin it uh, symmetrical to your blocking mats or any other soft surface and uh, pin, uh, use, uh, don't have, um, the distance between two pins shouldn't be too far either. Otherwise you will end up with uh, spikes as well. So, I removed my hat from the blocking board and this is the way it looks like. Now, isn't it nice and neat? This is the front side and here is the back side uh, and blocking really made all the difference. The ribbings are all nice and neat now. <laughs> I'm back in my living room. I put on my hat and this is the way it looks like now. I hope you can see this. 
this feels a bit like yoga. Um, I personally love the way the crown is shaped. I feel it looks very modern. Again, I will try to incorporate a couple of different ways to shape the crown in a pattern like this version, which has an, a more invisible transition here towards the crown and a very well-rounded top, but also a couple of, uh, you know, more classic approaches. Again, it's the first link in the description below. Now, maybe despite all caution, your first head ended up too big or too small, or there are some mistakes in it. Try to see it as a learning experience, take notes and adjust the pattern accordingly. And you know, it doesn't mean your hat is worthless. In fact, maybe it will fit someone in your family. And as winter is coming, you know, there are sadly a lot of homeless people and I'm very sure they will cherish a hand knit hat like nothing else, even if it is too big for you. Anyway, that's how to knit a hat. Make sure to comment with your questions, like this video to support my work and of course don't forget to subscribe in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your winter!